This is a day in the life of a soft, cozy entrepreneur with a business that generates over six figures a year in revenue. Traditional hard entrepreneurship says hustle, hustle, more at all costs, more is always better, do more, be more, work more, you're a machine. It destroyed my life and that's just not very fun. So last year I made the switch from hard entrepreneurship to soft entrepreneur and it changed my entire life. And in the process, I've made myself a little list of rules for soft entrepreneurship to follow. So let's chat through those while we go through a day in the life together. Come run my business with me today. We have a lot on our to-do list. We have some work stuff, but I also wanna add some fun stuff on there because what's the point of running a business if you can't do fun stuff in your day? So my work stuff that I have to do, I have to film this YouTube video, very videoception. I have a call booked with my content assistant, Maya, who edits all my videos, and I'm gonna to attempt to film 10 TikToks during that time. I also have to review a few more lessons of my course. I also have to check in with my freelance clients stuff and just make sure all of her project management stuff is going okay and um that there's nothing overdue and then some fun things i'd love to do i'd love to work on my reading nook which i'll show you in a second i also want to order new glasses so let's see if the glasses store is open today when i go out i also have pilates at 4 30 today and then we're raiding in world of warcraft tonight for three and a half hours all right first things first let's head off to a cute cafe because that's the only way i can get started with my day and get anything done is if i have a good treat and a good drink there to support me. <laughs> Here, I have to take this backpack. I'm so sorry. My life has changed since I got these headphones. This is what I'm listening to right now. Now you might be thinking, Dea, why are you starting work so late at like 10 or 11 a.m.? So I wanna welcome you to soft entrepreneurship rule number one, which is a very, very, very strict zero shame policy. So essentially casual shames are things like if you get up a little bit later and you start work a little bit later, I used to say things like, why are you starting work so late? You're already behind. You know, there are people who wake up at 6 a.m. at 5 a.m. and start work then. They're getting so much more done than you. Like you're being so lazy. Those casual shames would happen throughout the day. Always when I felt like I wasn't living up to my highest possible potential self. You know that person that you have in your mind that's like perfect at everything? and she's like the fittest version of you she's the most productive version of you the most creative version of you the most like the nicest version of you the best mood version of you all of those things in one person and you compare everything that you do to that person now my one question here is has shaming yourself ever done anything to improve your life especially in a business context for me no shaming myself has never made me more productive it's never made me happier it's never made me feel more at peace with my life with my business none of it i do my best every single day i wake up when i want i do the tasks that i think make the most sense strategically for the business but beyond that i'm just a human and also another thing is when you become an entrepreneur when you run a business your time no longer equals your productivity. Like, I feel like a lot of times we're in this employee mindset where if you work in corporate, you work 40 hours and your time equals your productivity. Like you sit down, you get paid for your hours. A lot of times the highest impact things you can do are creative things, the things that happen in your mind, things that happen when you're not in a stressed out situation. And part of this like stopping casual shaming is also I run everything through the filter of, would I say this verbally to my business best friend? If no, then no. If Georgie, my business best friend came to me and was like, day, I started work kind of late at like 10.30, a.m. I'd be like, oh my gosh, good for you. You're still going to get everything done. We both know you are. You work so hard. Like you're doing great. If you needed the extra sleep, you, your body needed the extra sleep. Another thought, isn't time flexibility and freedom why you became self-employed in the first place? Like, isn't the goal of running your own business to have time freedom? And finally, this is also a sub rule of this rule. I have a strict no things are emergencies in my business. I'm not a doctor in an emergency room. It doesn't really matter most things if they get done today or tomorrow. It really is not that deep. Why should I create all of these fake urgencies, fake emergencies, and then stress myself out about, you know, oh my gosh, you didn't send the email today. So that's rule number one, zero shame policy. Chef's kiss, change my business life. Highly recommend it to you. 
So I'm currently in the process of reviewing my entire 100 plus lesson signature program DBM Bootcamp. It has been quite a feat. I started this project in November and I'm almost, almost, almost done because I want to make sure that everything is as up to date as possible always. So I'm watching every single lesson, taking notes on anything that I want to change or update or add. The foundation of a good business is a good product and it's so important to me that students love my program. So that's why I'm really taking my time doing this project. Let's go get some new glasses. Oh my gosh, the weather's so good. This is the first time I've ever filmed and walked at the same time. I feel like I've made it. Filming this video made me forget my house keys. I literally thought I lost them, but they're at home. I just forgot to put them in my bag because I was too busy filming my little open the door, open the door situation. Now the next rule I want to talk about when it comes to soft entrepreneurship is getting clear on what you are optimizing for. Because for a long time as a business owner, I didn't know what I was optimizing my business and my life for. And if you're not clear on it, then your default tends to be money. And you just end up trying to make more and more and more money. And I think you have to be extremely careful about this because you, most of the time, you will get what you are optimizing for. And if you're not clear or you haven't thought about what am I optimizing for, you might end up sacrificing things that are actually important to you trying to get to the default of just making more money. I feel like money is not even the thing most of us want. Most of us want the thing that money allows us to have, which is, you know, freedom or more time with family and friends or like hobbies or experiences or travel. So like, that's what you're optimizing for. You're not optimizing for money, but if you solely focus on the money, you might give up these things that are more important to you to try to get here. There's this really great quote by Derek Sivers. He sold his business for like $22 million. He, this book, Anything You Want is super good. He said, never forget why you're really doing what you're doing. Are you helping people? Are they happy? Are you happy? Are you profitable? Isn't that enough? Another great quote by Jenny Blake from Free Time is foregoing money as the main driver requires trust because it is counter-cultural to imagine freeing up time and energy first so that you can attract new and better opportunities next. Hi. So Maya is my content assistant. Yay. I love having her on the team. She's amazing. She does all the editing for all of our YouTube videos. So if you see any beautiful edits, it's all Maya. So what Maya and I do sometimes when I am stuck on filming. So right now I'm in the process of doing a challenge where I want to post a hundred TikTok videos in three months, which is very ambitious. So in order to do that, we just kind of have to get ahead as much as possible. So we're doing a little one hour recording session where we'll just both mute and turn off our cameras and she's just gonna hold me accountable to essentially record as many as I can. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll see how many I can get done in this little one hour session. So this is my little notion of all of our short form content. 
So you can see here we have like a Kanban view. Here I just put all the ideas. Here I put the good ideas. So ideas that I think are worth potentially making. This is Daya to film, then Daya to post, and this is ready in TikTok, and then this is live. So this is our little step-by-step -step system in which I'm trying to get my 100 done. And here's my little tracker. So we already have five posted. So about a million more to go. And my reward for posting a hundred times is I'm going to get to spend a hundred dollars worth of monies at the bookstore, which I'm extremely excited about. And that's very motivating. I'm very treat oriented. So yeah, let's get going and start to film some of these data to film ones. Got a little bit of extra lighting. This is my little side light ring light because I have um, a window here. And so sometimes the lighting in the videos are a little bit off. But like there are too many shadows on this side of my face so there you go there's my little phone i use cap cut to record front camera because i have to know what i look like otherwise i go crazy i have my scripts and my notes and i just transport them into the little teleprompter so i have my little notes here and yeah let's start with the first video <laughs> okay this is the best book I read last year. It's about self-sabotage. And before you think, I don't self-sabotage, that's what I used to think too. So let me just put it this way. What do we think? Is that okay? Okay. I think it looks pretty good. All right, next video. Now I'm gonna film one that requires another pro- Oh, dang, what did I just do? because I ordered this thing and I'm gonna talk about this product and the fact that I bought it within 10 minutes of seeing it on an Instagram ad. Ginger, please don't show your butt to everyone. Okay. I only had one shot to do that because I ripped open the packaging. So that shot better have been it. A second one, nailed it. I used to change outfits every time I would record a new TikTok. Now I'm just like, it's the same outfit, guys. I'm batch recording. What can I say? This is authentic content creation in a sustainable way. I don't know. I don't think that was that good. Let's see. Let me try that again. I just feel like the lighting is so brutal on my skin right now. Oh, this kind of works. Okay, let's try that one again. Done. All right, next one. Nailed it! Another one done. I have to look for a picture of my YouTube channel. Because we just hit 10,000 subscribers. Actually, we're at 11,000 subscribers now, which is actually insane. I haven't talked about it here yet, but it's actually crazy to me. I have so much to say about this um, because the time has flown by. I remember two and a half years ago when I first started making YouTube videos, I was like, you know what? The time is going to pass anyway. Why don't you just start making YouTube videos? And in two years, you'll have been making YouTube videos for two years. And that's now now i've been making youtube videos for two years so exciting we're at 11 000 subscribers that's just actually crazy to me so thank you so much for watching the videos um yeah it's just amazing thank you so much i could have never imagined this honestly okay let me film this video about my biggest lessons from hitting 10k subscribers Nailed it. Nailed it. The whole time Max is roasting me in the background. Another one done. Yay. Thanks. Last one. Thanks. I'm talking to the camera, but it's cute that you're responding to everything. Did it. So here are all the ones I filmed as proof. Oh, oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay! I did it. Now let's go startle Maya <laughs> um, out of the call. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so I'm trying to post 30 days in a row first before I commit to 100, but my secret goal is 100. I also batch, like edit everything and batch do the captions. So you can see that for this one, I already have the caption written. So like last, like a few days ago, I sat down and I essentially just edited and wrote the captions for like five to six. So I can just post them quickly instead of having to edit and do captions every single day because for some reason captions just take me forever. All right, post. This is my friend Louise. She makes beautiful cakes. <laughs> this just randomly pop up, but look how beautiful her cakes are. 
This is a shout out to Louise. And this is something I always do with TikTok. After I post, I just immediately switch into my private TikTok account. I heard it somewhere, post and ghost. That's exactly what I do. Because again, I don't want to attach any of my worth, any of my free time to my business and like obsessively checking the notifications and checking if the video did well or if it didn't do well and all of this stuff. I don't want to play that game. So as much as possible, I always post it and then I'll leave immediately so that I don't really depend that much on the numbers. It works really well. I highly recommend it. All right, so let's tick off the sixth day that we posted. Exciting. And we filmed a bunch today. So let's drag some stuff from the film column into here. So I filmed this. So this is gonna be the future reading nook. This chair was the, is the focal point. I've been eyeing it for a year and Max and I went through heck and back to get it. <laughs> Picture this for a second. Rug, cute rug, probably green rug. Not sure I'm still looking at options here. Cute little mini side reading nook table here so I can put my little drink and my little books here. Bookshelves, once we figure out how we're able to put stuff into, <laughs> what's the verb? Drill stuff into the wall. Maybe some paint, not sure. And of course, two cats. And cute fluffy blanket. I can't decide between green or checkered yet. I'm taking suggestions at this time. I'd love to hear. Another rule I really like for soft entrepreneurship is constraints. Infinite growth in any aspect of your business is an unrealistic expectation to place on yourself. So for example, money constraints would be knowing what is your enough number. I have to be six figures. Okay, you hit six figures, who cares? Now it's multi six figure. Okay, you hit multi six figure, who cares? Seven figure, eight figure, nine figure. It's like, what's the point? What's the point of doing all of that? Like what is enough? What is actually enough for you to live a happy, peaceful life and feel good about what you're running. Another one is work constraints. So I don't have an infinite to-do list. I don't put 4,000 things on my to-do list. Every single day I set my big three. And if I accomplish those three things, again, three, right? Constraints, then I feel good about my work day because otherwise the work just expands. There's always gonna be more work. So if, you're, if your goal is always, I just need to do more, you will never feel satiated in how much you've gotten done in your productivity. I also have a very strict energy constraint, which is, the standard of did I do my best for today, right? Because a lot of times I feel like people are like, oh, give your 100, give your 100%, give 100% every single day. Your 100% might look different. Some days there are a lot of things going on and your 100% doesn't look like yesterday's 100%. So that's the question I ask myself, did I do my best for today? I also have time constraints. I have really hard boundaries around my time. I have really hard boundaries around when I finish work, I don't open my laptops on the weekends. I close my laptop at 5 p.m. I don't open my laptop because I know that if I open my laptop, the email's there, the Slack is there. I start to get triggered to go into work mode and that's just not fun for me. I'm getting ready to leave to Pilates soon. Just setting up all of the footage from today. Look at how much footage there is for a day in the life. This is why day in the lives are so much work. Now it's time for Pilates. <laughs> Another rule for soft entrepreneurship is life is always greater than my work. If I'm overly invested in my work, I ride the emotional roller coaster every single day of my business. Video does well, great, I'm happy. Video doesn't do well, I'm sad. Da, 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 da. It's like this. That's not fun. I make sure that there are more pillars to who I am, my identity, than just my business and my work. And I have invested a lot of time, a lot of energy into doing this. If a video flops, if a launch doesn't do super well, it's just something to analyze and try to do better next time. It has nothing to do with you personally, right? Sometimes when we start businesses, we think we equals the business, but that's just not true. Like the business is a separate third party entity. It doesn't mean anything about your worth, which is priceless as a human being, right? My work is just a small part of who I am. And I highly recommend that. It has changed my life, my business, so much for the better to be so much more than just my business. And then gotta grasp where you're at. 